Okay, everybody. So in this video, we are going to be building two chassis specifically for testing motors. One is going to be an MS chassis, and then the other is going to be for Super 2, but uh, that one's going to be a dual purpose chassis. It's going to test in the normal rotation of the motor and also reverse polarity. Um, this is sponsored by DXN Provisions. Go ahead and check them out in the links in the video description down below. So, like I said, we will be having two different Super 2 chassis terminal configurations. This one is going to be for the reverse, um, the blue plastic. Um, there's, we're going to be making some changes to that one. At the number 5421 gold is going to be used for the regular rotation. So. We're gonna have to go cut a few parts off of the plastic. Um, this is gonna be to be able to allow the battery to be mounted in reverse. So at that spot, you have to go cut the plastic off because the terminal needs to be flat. So go ahead and cut that out. That's fairly easy to do. And then you have to cut this ridge that allows for you to mount the batteries in reverse that allows it to go the FM route. And this is a terminal. You're gonna have to go flatten that uh, bump that allows you to reverse the battery again so that the um, positive side is going to be mounting um, and uh, connecting to that side of the terminal instead. So there you have it. It's um, now flat that allows you to put it backwards. And here we're gonna go test fit it and then we're gonna have to go cut an additional ridge you're gonna see a little bit more of a close-up later you have to make room for the battery and then you take a, a rotary tool and then um, grind out that particular part of the ridge on the super 2 chassis so so that the uh, battery can move back and forth easily and then connect with the terminal more easily like that. So here, there you go. Now it's loose on the uh, battery compartment. You can go all the way to the terminal. Now we're just checking to see the fit, install the switch and gear cover, and then mount the AO620 bearings for the shaft. This is the reinforced easy locking gear cover. We're gonna go ahead and um, just uh, mount, that, mount the um, lock and then of course the gear cover we're gonna put in later at this step we just need to make sure that we don't uh, uh what do you call it screw in the uh, the screw a little bit uh, uh what do you call it off angle and then when you're gonna go cut out the gears the carbon reinforced gears um, make sure that you cut them out cleanly otherwise they could cause potential problems when you're measuring the uh, speed of the motor and there you go where we've got cleaned out old AO620s that don't have the uh, cover on them anymore so these are quite old now these are the all metal version of the AO620s um, and just put them on the mounts for the chassis and just make sure to make sure that they're securely in those positions Next, we install the gold-plated terminals, and these are going to be for the regular uh, position of the batteries. And then, of course, you have to go check the uh, straightness of the shaft just to make sure that it's straight, and then you clean them. Uh, basically, you take like you know a rag or some paper towels, and then just clean them up with like either alcohol or what I'm using here is a, a power shot, essentially like a, a motor cleaner and then just wipe it down because there's going to be dust on it and you don't want that dust inside of your shaft tester so it makes it easier for you to keep the maintenance low on the shaft tester itself so basically you're just dropping the the shaft through the shaft tester um, if it binds it's going to stop and if it's straight it just keeps it'll just keep dropping through and um and as you can see, I had to fast forward through this one. There's quite a bit of shafts that I had to go uh, test to make sure that I find two good ones. And as you can see, I already have three bad ones that have some bend. And then it took me a while to go find uh, 
another good um, what do you call it uh, shaft that's actually pretty straight there you go it took some time so this one I had an extra one out of the last package it looks like I got two on the last package that were both good that one I'm just taping down to make sure that I don't lose track of it so now we just install the shafts onto the wheels um, just and uh, we're gonna go check to make sure that there aren't any wobble on the crown gear so so here I'm just making sure that the hex is basically um, keyed in correctly before I even start pushing it in so that makes it more easy to pop the shaft in less resistance and you're less likely to go bend the shaft when you're doing it this way I have a an installer right there that basically allows me to hammer in the shaft and then here this is another uh, shaft installer or like a wheel remover as well um, it allows you to push the shaft through the wheel at a more even pace so that you don't bend it because like what's the point of uh, testing those shafts if you're just gonna bend them as you're installing them into the wheels so here um, now um, we're gonna go check the crown gears to make sure that they don't wobble and uh, you're basically just checking to see if it's straight and if it doesn't wobble out of place because um, you'll lose power and then those are um, the motor washers we're just gonna put them in those two positions that I pointed out um, they're gonna be on the inside of the bearing and then outside of the crown gear essentially towards the other outside of the chassis um, basically that allows you to prevent the the spur gear and the crown gear at the front from sliding back and forth um, losing contact with the propeller shaft and that minimizes the loss in power on the transmission so there you go you just um, mount the wheels on this side press it slightly just so that you could get the position started and then now you're going to use the uh, wheel installer as well this allows you to make sure you don't bend the shaft essentially this is uh, just one of my favorite tools all in all um, and then when you're mounting this you want to make sure that the shaft is centered on both sides of the wheel basically on the left wheel there should be enough um, pin that comes out essentially the shaft should protrude this exact same amount from the left wheel and also from the right wheel so that it's centered on the position for the chassis now you're going to check the spur gear for the wobble as well and install the motor spacers to shim the spur gear at the back there you go so i'm going to go check it just make sure that there's no wobble because if it wobbles like i said you're going to go lose power on the transmission if it isn't straight if there's a gear that's just wiggling out of place then you lose the power on the transmission and um, it's going to give you an inaccurate reading on the speed checker later um, basically you're going to have like an inaccurate reading um, you're going to have like a lower speed when it uh, reports you later so here you basically just um, we're going to remove the uh, what do you call it the, the gear uh, not the gear but the uh, the bearing and then we're gonna go put the the motor washers behind that towards the other side of the chassis you pop it through the hole and then you're gonna put the spur gear on that side and then it's gonna be basically the that's going to prevent the spur gear from sliding back and forth as well so it's just gonna essentially keep it in position now install the wheels onto the chassis and then do the exact same thing where you center it on both sides where there's enough uh, there's the exact same amount of shaft protruding on one side of the wheel on the right side of the wheel and then on the left wheel there's going to be the exact same amount of uh, shaft that's protruding out as well you're just when you're doing this you're just making sure that the balance is um, good essentially you don't want one side of the shaft protruding more than the other um, it essentially offsets the spin and um, that kind of makes it weird um, when you do the weight the weight is going to lean more on one side and this makes it a lot more balanced when you do it this way 
So here you go. I'm just checking the uh, wheels um, without the propeller just to see how it uh, wiggles. And it looks uh, pretty good from here. So you can see the, the wheels are straight and they don't wobble. Now we're working on the floor encoded gear shaft, 15400. We're going to um, mount that on the spur gear that allows you to have a much uh, smoother position. And then just check to see uh, the, how straight that um, counter gear is going to be as well too, because you don't want that to wobble as well. You want to make sure that all your gears are straight and none of them are wobbling in place because you lose power when that happens. So you just um, insert the motor washers as well. You can just harvest these from any dead motors that you have. And then that allows you to um, help center that, um, uh, that counter gear. Basically that prevents it from shaking out of place and that minimizes the loss. And this is 15205, 1.4 millimeter propeller shaft. Um, you just install it, make sure that it's not too loose or too tight. And uh, as you can see, there is a little too loose. So I tightened up a little bit by pushing the pinions a little bit more. Um, there you go. So you don't want it too tight. You want a little bit of room in there for the chassis to flex if you're on a normal race car. But on this one, you want it to be very close so that um, you don't lose very much um, power on the transmission. So. Here you go, you just oil the gears, um, make sure that they stay in place and that they're straight. Basically, you're just going every part of it as a, another check. And then install the motor just to see how it feels. And then there you go, I think over here I'm checking the, um, the position or the amount of washers that I had. I think I had to remove one because it was a little bit too tight. and. Um, now I readjusted it here. This is me installing and bending the terminal. You can see here, I put a photo so that it's easier to see how, where the bend is. You just bend it at that position, just slightly. If it, you bent it too much, you can bend it back slightly. And uh, you can see that it's just a very slight bend and it's kind of contacting just the leading edge of the switch right there. And um, that allows the terminal to touch the negative uh, battery. And here, there you go. I'm just testing the fitment. And as you can see, um, it's really hard to tell, but yeah, it's definitely spinning the wrong way. You can see the batteries are mounted backwards. So here we're starting on the MS chassis. Um, we're just putting in the terminals and just prepare the counter gear and the shafts, essentially um, fairly ordinary. Um, um, this is a lot easier of a build because there really isn't much modification that you need to do on the MS chassis. Um, the transmission is fairly easy to build. This is the 15349, the 3.5 to 1, and then 15390, the floor encoded gear shafts. Those are straighter, so I like to use those rather than the ones that come in with a gear set. And then you just have to file the ridges on the end bell mount so that they don't crack. Usually when you keep inserting and removing a motor, those that particular piece of uh, plastic will crack. And then you just file down, file down those ridges. You can see there's no more ridges there and that makes it uh, more durable. Um, basically, it's still tight on the motors and it's uh, going to keep it in and then now we're installing the AO620s that already have their covers removed these are old I'm just reusing them and then you just uh, clean the wheel shafts again basically the same steps from Super 2 I'm just going through these because you've already seen this step from Super 2 just cleaning them again and then here um, just installing the shafts on the wheels the same way you want to make sure that the hex is keyed in the same direction as the hex that's on the wheel so that it's easier to push in. Um, and then after you've mounted them on the wheels, you can start readjusting their uh, position on the wheels as well. So since this is the exact same width as the front, uh, you can pretty much um, measure the exact same width 
from the front wheels from Super 2 because they're pretty much the same width. So you just the, use that as a reference point to see how far out you want to push the um, shaft or how far in you need to pull it back. And there you go. I'm just readjusting it with the uh, wheel puller. Um, just making sure that you're centering it and that allows you to make sure that the balance is correct on the wheel and of course on the chassis as well. I mean it's even more important on MS because it's very balanced in terms of the way that it's assigned. The batteries are in the right spot, the motor's in the center, the gears are right there in the middle and the balance is really important on that one. Here you are just checking the um, Whisper gears for wobble as well. You don't want these to have any wobble because if you do, of course, they will have loss in power for the transmission. So I just check them, install them, see how they spin um, to see if you need to shim those. But um, generally on these ones, you don't need to shim them. Um, it depends on your chassis because sometimes the chassis is just a little bit more loose. You might have to shim those in position. Doesn't matter which side, it just depends on how far it moves from one side to the other. So here you just um, being careful to push in the shaft because you know, like I said earlier, you don't want to bend these shafts after you've already found some good ones when you were um, using the shaft tester because you're just defeating what you did from a prior step and you're negating like a good practice. And same thing here, um, this is going to be for the front bumper. So you're doing the same steps. Um, installing the shaft on the wheel, keyed in correctly so that it's easy to push in. And then you just push them through with the wheel installer. The same thing, just adjust the position as well. And uh, that allows you to have a finished, essentially a finished front bumper. Oh, and I failed to mention earlier that these are 26 millimeter wheels. The good thing about these setups is that you can use whatever wheels that you want. Um, ideally, you want the 35 millimeters, um, a wheel, um, what do you call it, combination. So you could have the true maximum speed legally that you can have on those motors that you're testing. So you know the actual top speed. And um, those, that's when you really see the difference in the torque. Like a motor that can get to a higher top speed has probably slightly more torque than one that isn't really able to reach its max speed. So. The more motors you test, the more likely for you to be able to tell which one's a good motor and which one's a bad one. And here we're just putting the bumpers on and uh, you know, this is a fairly simple step. You just have to make sure that everything's in place when you pop it in and these are very easy to pop in place too. So pretty good for uh, assembly. A lot easier than the Super 2 where there's a lot more um, a modification you have to do. Now you just check the counter gears this time for wobble. Uh, make sure that they don't have a, uh, what do you call it, an issue with that. And here you install the AO520s on the shafts for the counter gears. Um, make sure that they're going to be straight again. And uh, that allows you to double check them to make sure that they're not gonna lose you power as well. And these are the 3.5 to 1 gears. Um, you're just putting them in and then checking them on the shaft and then giving them a spin. Um, doing this essentially allows you to check whether or not you're going to have any problems with it. And uh, you put the AO520 in and then you spin it on anything. Like a, if you have like a separate motor shaft that you can mount it to, you can just do that. And here, now we're just installing the motor. And I think I put in a, like a mock dash in there, I think at the time. Yeah, I think it was a mock dash and uh, I don't think I did any, uh, a lot of break in on this one. I think I just used it. And then here we're installing some more uh, shims for the counter gears. Um, basically, like I said again from before, like the old counter gear from Super 2, um, this prevents it from sliding um, side, side to side. And uh, if it slides side to side, you're basically losing contact with the pinion and that um, basically you lose power when you do that so you just mount them on one side to keep them in place um, you can put it on the back side of the gear or the front side it, it um, matters mostly on the fitment on how close it is to the pinion and now you're basically just testing the transmission so there you go 
this one is uh, much simpler and it's pretty easy to build. So there you go. Now we are going to go cut the bumper, which I forgot to film as you guys could see right here. Um, I forgot to film this part, so sorry I, show, I didn't show you this, but uh, this is actually the most important part, which is removing the extra bit of the bumper. Um, if you don't do this step, uh, the bumper is going to be hitting uh, one of those um, wheels that are connected to the uh, speed checker. You can see the position where I've cut it right there. So not too far forward. And then you can see the cut that I made just now. It's slightly angled so that it doesn't touch those wheels that are for testing the speed. There you go. There's the angled cut that I'm showing. And um, that allows that rear bumper now to clear. And here you go. You can see the fitment. It's now a lot better. So it's going to be like that. So if you don't cut that off, those are going to grind onto those um, wheels that basically keep the car in place. That's why they're angled. They, they try to keep the car in the center of the speed checker while the car is um, spinning the wheels. So here we're using some IKEA batteries just for the testing, just so that you guys could see it's working. And uh, these really aren't very good batteries. I'll be honest with you, if you want um, more performance, I'd stick with the um, the Fujitsu Pinks or the Tamiya Neo Champs for the lightweight battery. So here, we're going to listen, we're going to run it. There you go, we're pressing the power and then the start. And this one looks like it just hits 40 kilometers per hour. So I think this motor just needs a little bit more braking. Um, it should be able to also hit around uh, 42. Um, should be at least um, at least with this uh, battery, but um, the IKEA batteries are probably holding it back to design. These were only put to 1.49 volts, and I think you could see a little bit more performance when you charge it at a much higher voltage. So there you go, you could see, pretty good, not too terrible, at least not like a, an unbroken in um, a mock dash. So here, we are testing the normal uh, configuration of the terminals, basically it's from rear motor. Um, we have the sprint dash installed and we're going to go test the speed. Uh, this one is uh, clocking in at uh, 43 kilometers per hour and uh, looks like I have a friend joining me. Try to keep quiet here just real quick. And um, here we're just running the dash looks like it's hit. it hits 43 it looks like it's okay at 1.49 it's actually fine and uh, the IKEA batteries really aren't very good so yeah you guys can see it's still working so the more interesting test is coming up next which is on the same chassis we can run the motor backwards and uh, this is going to be with the new terminals the, the bent terminal so that it actually touches the batteries in reverse there you go we're putting it backwards and uh, doing the terminal cuts like this and the chassis cut like this there's not going to be no twist on the chassis as well so just run it spin those first and then just mount it there you go listen in actually pretty surprised with the way that the transmission turned out so yeah 41 kilometers per hour this motor wasn't broken in in the reverse direction, so it's not going to be ideal. So 41 is the limit on this uh, split dash. You can see a little bit of uh, less power. The, in normal configuration, it hits 43, and on this one, it hits 41. So there you go. It's pretty convenient having to use just the same chassis. So you just need to change the terminals around, and that allows you to um, check the motor in reverse and I, I think I'm gonna leave these at DXN if you guys want to check it out and I think if you guys want to borrow them uh, uh, maybe just have the staff run it for you